How did this happen? It was the fifth wave movie. He watched it. Oh no! This sort of thing didn't even happen when we watched Twilight! Yeah, poor bastard. He didn't even get to finish his popcorn. I read the book jacket for this book, and my goodness, the dude definitely knows how to write a good hook. Five waves to take out humanity? I've been looking for an interesting apocalypse movie. Seriously, sign me up. I started reading it, and I know some book people are probably going to be coming at me for this, but I just couldn't get into it. I tried, believe me, I tried. But I'll say, this guy writing a teenage girl perspective does not work. I had to put it down after she kept thirsting after a guy, which is not a problem in itself, but she did it in the most cringy way possible. Thank goodness this top-rated review on Goodreads found the quote because I don't think I'd survive another instance going back in there. Before the arrival, guys like Evan Walker never looked twice at me, much less shot wild game for me and washed my hair. They never grabbed me by the back of the neck like an airbrushed model on my mother's paperback. Abs a clenching, pecs a popping. My eyes had never been looked so deeply into, or my chin raised to bring my lips within an inch of theirs. Okay, migraine, migraine. Really? Airbrushed model? Abs a clenching? Pecs a poppin'? This is probably just as bad as those guys who describe boobs in the craziest, strangest, most gravity-defying ways possible. You know, I'm kind of glad other people on Goodreads saw this too, so good job, reviewer. Well, that makes me 0 for 2 now with The Darkest Minds, but I'm here to review YA adaptations, so dang it, it's gonna happen! Ugh, except I can't. I'm sorry, there's just nothing good about this movie! Basically, aliens attack and hit us with a series of waves. That's the most compelling part. After that, straight down. First, they send an electromagnetic pulse that took out all the electronics. So no more anime porn. Sorry, guys. Second, they hit the world with earthquakes and tsunamis to get all the major coastal cities. Sorry, California, that's like a double whammy for you. Third, birds basically took a shit everywhere and I guess we just ate it. Fourth wave, I believe, is where the aliens start possessing humans. It wasn't made entirely clear, but the thing in the book said trust no one, so I assume that's what it meant. Mom dies, Cassie, dad, and little boy go to the camp where they separate the dad from the kids. Sabretooth is going to play the bad guy in this iteration of why a evil military man. Cassie gets separated from her little brother, but this kid is majorly dumb. It's not like the military would have wanted to leave her behind, so this driver would have easily stopped if he had said something. But no, seems like he figured banging on the back window was enough. The adults get all freaked out because the aliens may have already possessed them. When they try to leave, Sabretooth gives the order to mow them down. Sorry, Dad, we can't have you hanging around a YA film featuring a strong female protagonist. Nope, nope. In the military camp, they begin training Hot Guy Number 1 and the other kids to help defend humanity from the aliens. Hot Guy Number 1 was Cassie's first crush and everyone's go-to boy for YA movies. Cassie runs away, but gets shot in the leg. It's alright though, don't worry. Hot Guy Number 2 is here to save the day. He does the medicine on her, and even needs to carry her bridal style to another room instead of bringing the new bandages and medical supplies to her. Logic. Back at the military camp, heavy eyeliner girl and hot guy number one square off. She has the magical ability to know when people are staring at her butt when it's really just the camera doing that. Hey! Keep staring at my ass, and I'll rip your throats out. We've got a badass over here. After some training, Sabretooth tells Hot Guy 1 that they have some tech in their helmets that'll help identify which people are possessed and which are not. Cassie watches Hot Guy number 2 do some Hot Guy things. Captain America did it better, just saying. Hot Guy number 2 wants to help her get back to her little brother, so I guess he's sticking around. Then Cassie watches Hot Guy number 2 do more Hot Guy things. I actually feel bad for the fishies I have to swim through that man sweat of his. Yeah, why is this so boring? Really, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the way it's shot or the lackluster dialogue, but there's something that's just making this so dull. Back at the military, the kids are sent on a mission with their fancy new alien targeting helmets. They pew pew for a bit until they realize that their helmets are messed up. It makes everyone think that everyone else is an alien. The big twisty twist is that aliens have possessed the army and they're just using these kids to be the fifth wave. Dun dun dun. For Big Shot aliens, they really aren't all that smart. Hot Guy 1 goes back to get Cassie's little brother. 
Cassie has to pew pew her way through. She splits with hot guy number two and sneaks in. Hot guy two is off to blow up the entire facility. They save the little brother and Cassie is reunited with hot guy one. <laughs> My thoughts. I wish I had something interesting to say about this movie, but it's not even bad in the way you would watch it because it's fun to watch a train wreck, you know? It's just so bland and uninspired. Apart from the description of the first four waves, there was nothing special about the aliens, there was nothing special about this girl, there was nothing special about this boy, or this one, or this one. There was nothing special about Sabretooth apart from him being Sabretooth, there was nothing special about this post-apocalyptic world, and there was absolutely nothing special with this third act. Just pew-pews and boom-booms. No special weapons, no cool fight sequences, nothing. Even if you were going to give me a predictable post-apocalyptic alien invasion plot with a typical quote-unquote strong female character, you couldn't at least give me something in the aesthetic that made it special from the rest? As stupid as it was, at least the host had some ridiculous chrome cars and some glowy eyes. Ugh. I'm sorry for the rant. If anything, I should be thanking this movie for being one of the last few dystopian movies that proved we were done with the genre. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. It was tough, but we did get through this together. Make sure to hit that like button, smash that scribble, and write a comment about how I just don't understand the intricacies of hot guy chopping wood or polluting the river in his man musk.